want to make them make basically a stiffer penalty um, for something I, I don't know anything about this, that a process that creates a highly con concentrated version of marijuana known as butane hash oil. Never heard of that before. Um, he vetoed that because you know he, he feels that marijuana should be legalized anyway. Um, so that was vetoed. Um, there was a bill that was vetoed that was, would allow teens to work later. Um, right now I think they can work till, their sev till seven o'clock. Um, and this would have let them work in the summer um, till 11, the PV told that. Um, was it summer? Well, I think. no later than 9, 9 p.m. over the summer, and then the bill would have permitted employees under age 16 to work until until 11 in, you know, in summer. In so, summer it was later, yeah. Yes. So I think the concern was schoolwork. Well, yes, um, but I think a lot of kids are out till 9 o'clock, at least 9 o'clock on the school night sometimes. And then there was another one um, that, um, uh, about CRT, we all, you know, CRT is, you know, big, and, and he said something about, it, well, the, they wanted to put, well, basically it was Republicans wanted to put in a ban on CRT, and Governor Evers um, vetoed that, saying they objected to creating a new censorship rule that restricts schools and educators from teaching the honest, complete facts about important historical topics like the Civil War and the Civil Rights. And because I, it wasn't CRT that the bill said. It, w it included a lot of other terms that I think he was worried that would get misinterpreted. So it, the it whole could, thing, It could yeah. be. Um, yeah. I don't think that anybody really objects to teaching the true facts of the Civil War, I, I the good, not. the bad, and the good, the bad, and the ugly of it, you know? Right. Um, so I don't really think that is really what, what the issue was. But anyway, that's, now they're going to be on hiatus, so be kind of quiet in Madison for a while. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have. Yeah. All right. Any questions or further comments for Pat? Okay. We will keep moving. Nick, anything new with CISA? Well, I tell you, I wasn't able to attend the last meeting because I was in Vegas, um, so I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no money or anything. No, got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> And um, we will be talking about the um, youth apprentices. Yep, youth later on in the agenda. Yeah, later yep. on the agenda. Okay, student representative report. Um, short and sweet today because not much that went on. Drag is in full swing today. There's a meet in O'Connell Falls for throwers and high jumpers and pole vaulters. And then there's a girls' meet tomorrow in Oshkosh, which is all indoor. Thank God we're not on <laughs> But unfortunately, next week, Tuesday, we have one outdoors and southern doors, so uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be very cold. And then softball and baseball are in full swing, and then they have a game that was supposed to be tomorrow, but that got canceled mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. <laughs> and then um, the arts night was a success. The bands performed, and the students showcased their art, and I thought, and I think a lot of community members love, like to see that. Um, prom is this Saturday, and uh, congrats to the following individuals for being on court. Amelia Robinson, Aubrey Nellis, Ella Madden, Hallie Panger, Isabel McCoskey, Kennedy Nugel, Keegan Lidke, Trua Sullivan, Scott Tebon, Seth Lagrave, Javen Charles, Carson Lishka, Leighton Hagley, Cole Young, Austin Miller, and Ryan Pierre. Um, the band and choir trip is coming up, which is going to be on the spring, spring break, and that's, we're leaving Saturday and coming back Friday. And CMTs, or no, CMAs are going on at that time, so maybe we'll see someone famous, which is exciting. And then um, the blood drive is this Wednesday. That's all I have. First of all, I have to say that the, um, the Arts Night was, was absolutely fabulous. There are so many talented people. Oh, the students are just amazing. Their art, mm -hmm. the music, it was great. I mean, I have to commend our um, of course, the, the directors and the teachers that are involved in all of that, but the students are just, it was really, really a fun thing to, to be able to see some of their stuff. And I guess some of the artwork is still on display in different galleries until the end of the month. Is that mm -hmm. true? Yep. So, yeah. And the band, yeah, the, the, yeah, everything was just wonderful. And then one other question. The blood drive, you said, is Wednesday, and where is that? That's at the Wellness Center. And I think you can sign up with American Red Cross or through Logan North to see Robinson. 
They can call the wellness center too and sign up as well. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Have fun at prom. Thank you. <laughs> Um, under misconceptions and rumors, the only thing I want to just bring up is that we have a policy for public requests, suggestions, complaints, and I think we're not real good at, I mean, in going through our handbooks, that's one of the things I, I think we should probably try and have included in there, because there is a whole system, you know, so that problems or concerns or issues are handled the most expediently. And the board is a policy making group. So most concerns are going to be either handled by the teacher or by the building principal or by the administrator. Um, and if, I mean, there's a whole process. And of course, if the person is feeling that there's an issue that still has not been taken care of, then it comes to the board. But with each one of these areas, there are time frames where um, the person who brings up the concern can know that they will get responded to. And so anyway, if something comes directly to the board and it is not us, then we have to sort of shoot it back to who it really involves. And it's just sort of maybe wasting time for the person. So it certainly isn't a matter that we are not interested and things that are happening at the building or concerns you have at the buildings or concerns you might have in the classroom. But we're not the first, we aren't the first group that takes care of that. So I just wanted to, to make that clear and I think um, <coughs> the new website is, is up and running and um, all the policies are on the new website and we will make sure that the new handbooks have a section that refers to the policy so that everybody can um, find out whatever details they want. Um, all right, public participation. There is a lot of people here. Did anybody sign in to There's speak? No one, no one signed in to speak? Okay. All right, moving on to board president announcements. Well, my um, the first thing I would like to do is introduce Jesse Brinkman, who is our incoming superintendent um, for next year. Um, you've probably seen him at some of the other meetings because he's been very interested in following us um, since um, we first interviewed him. Um, but we couldn't make it a public announcement until it was official. So we're officially welcoming you. Did you want to say anything? Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to me um, very excited to be joining Algoma. It's a wonderful community. Um, got to spend some time here last week um, with in the buildings. Um, I currently work in the Green Bay School District, and we were on spring break, and so got to spend a couple days here. And it's just a lot of great things happening in the district, and I'm excited to continue it. So, yeah, welcome. <laughs> and we appreciate that you were taking some time out of your spring break to get to know us better. Um, let's see, what else? Um, spring workshops, did everybody get the mailing mm -hmm. that there are some spring workshops? I think, again, um, this probably applies more to newer boards, newer board members. There is also a new, board, new school board member gathering, yeah. so if they if we do have any new school board members um, after the election. Um, I just want to make sure they are aware that there are specific gatherings of new school board members, which I would totally encourage them to go to. Jennifer didn't have that opportunity because of COVID in terms of in-person stuff, so. But there was lots of good online training. Mm -hmm. Lots of good online training, but um, the in-person stuff is, I think, real helpful too because you meet other new school board members and, and you can all sort of feel the same way. And then these governing, so that is Tuesday, April 19th, um, CISA 7 um, is doing that. And, um, and then there are governing for excellent workshops, um, CISA 7 is doing it May 17th. So, if that applies to anyone, let the board know if you, if it does end up 
being something that applies. And, all right, administration reports. Nick? Uh, I'll start out with kind of a recap of our budget thus far this year. Um, I can tell you confidently that I don't think the school district's ever been in a better financial position than we are now. Um, I can also tell you that um, there are some opportunities to be realized uh, way ahead of time. Um, with the amount of defeasance that we've done, which is basically paying off debt early, um, we're looking at being eight to ten years ahead of schedule, um, which is, uh, I think, a really good thing. Um, but that also puts a lot of planning uh, back on the plates of people um, because unlike going to referendum for exceeding revenue limit, this uh, would be just reissuing debt so it doesn't really impact the taxpayer. Um, and if you've been a student of our district over the past 11 years, um, we have every year but one lowered our mill rate, which lowers you know, the tax burden on our citizens. Um, that will continue. Uh, so I think from a you know, financial outlook, again, I think we've done a beyond excellent job. Um, as you can see, down below in action, we're trying to complete some of the kind of internal projects that um, you know, we, we can because we have been good stewards of the money. So um, trying to kind of piece by piece do some of those items along with some of the pieces that people would like to see um, that have come up in our ad hoc committees and things like that, um, which uh, aren't major ticket items, but they are significant enough um, that we need to plan for them. Um, obviously, if you're trying to do any work right now, you understand that getting people to do things is really difficult. Um, but. We're fortunate that we have a really good custodial staff that's able to take on a lot more than perhaps some other places would be able to take on. So um, just in kind of a nutshell, um, just happy to see where the district is, um, excited about what opportunities lie ahead for the district, um, and then, you know, just kind of kudos to everybody involved and um, not one person is responsible for that type of financial performance. It's a team it's effort, so um, I, I appreciate that. Um, pupil audit completion. So we're also fortunate that we seem to be randomly chosen for audits every single year, which doesn't look like random to me, but um, had a fun day in a couple hours with our auditor because he was here the day we had the threat. So oh, he got to go outside. He got to experience all of our processes and procedures that day, which um, weren't part of his audit, but nonetheless, um, he got an inter interesting introduction to our school district. So, um, and again, no significant findings there. Doing every doing a great job with that. So happy with that. And then the last thing is just obviously it's unfortunate that we live in a world that we have to deal with certain things like we did last week. Um, I think from an internal perspective, everybody was on point and communicated well and, and people responded well, um, really all up and down um, our, st our staff and our students. Um, certainly there are things you, <laughs> you want to, you know, do fine and do better, but um, all in all, I think it was uh, an excellent response um, and I think it highlighted how we can work together when we need to work together. Um, and, you know, I hope it never happens again, but <coughs> I'm proud of the way we handled it when it did happen. So um, for everybody, the public's view, it's um, certainly after the fact, we find out that it's somebody in another country doing that. Um, That's what I was going to ask. Did we find that out? We actually did it the next day in northern Minnesota. They had two or three schools um, evacuated and sent home just like we did um, the, the bad part about that is we expended a whole lot of resources locally and we'll you know you'll never get anything out of it other than the, you know a real life exercise if you will um, but 
if you think about all the resources that have to come together in a short amount of time and then um, you know it just kind of sucks that again it's another day lost um, it's another distraction it's another thing where people get you know up in arms about stuff and really it wasn't anybody anybody local it wasn't anybody it wasn't a student it wasn't anything um, I mean that's good news. it's a good thing um, yeah because we, we, we don't want to go down the road. No. No. There were some other, was Manitowoc one of the other districts? Two rivers and Crivets were, uh, had the same calls, so that was partly um, the delay in getting the bomb dogs to the places because they had three of them going on it. So that was part of the issue is um, mm -hmm. you have to wait, which then people are upset and I have XYZ in the building and we evacuated the building. So um, we had to wait for that, but once we got the all clear, then um, we were able to kind of wrap things up pretty quickly. Um, but still all said and done, you're looking at you know, two and a half, three hours right. worth of time and people on edge and not knowing um, right. kind of what to do. Um, and yeah, it kind of sucks for everybody involved. Um, I certainly don't like, you know, having to evacuate a building and uh, the people that are. Oh, sorry. Um, it's not just you; it's everybody. That the, we're the having people, a difficulty with our sound, so. <clears throat> it, it can be a kind of a scary experience because we don't have all the information either. Right. Um, and all we're acting on is a very, very serious threat. Right. I know that you know, in those moments, you know, people respond in different ways, and it's um, just making sure that we do it as calmly as possible and, and be as effective as we possibly can. So, yeah, all in all, it was uh, I think a great job internally uh, uh, on our behalf, and um, just kind of kudos to everybody involved in communicating and getting people to where they needed to be. And, just responding in general is really great to see. I think the communication, at least I got all the alerts, it seemed, I mean, it really kept you informed in terms of what was happening. Obviously, you gave information, as, you didn't have any information other than what you were doing with the schools, you know. Correct. So, yeah. so that was something we debriefed on, and, and I think the whole 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 kind of update stuff was, mm -hmm. was helpful. Um, and there are a couple of things that will work out, but that's to be expected. So. Yeah. I thought it was nice at St. Paul's that you have the students go down there and be picked up from there. Well, we initially were going to have them picked up on the, by the soccer field, but we really couldn't hold off any longer. Um, so that's really how that played out. Um, that's one of the things that just planning for the future, we would like to perhaps get grade levels to certain places. Um, so then not only does it disperse the kind of reaction or response you get from family members, which I completely understand, but it doesn't overwhelm kind of one area. Um, mm -hmm. And then you know, ultimately, you know, you don't want to think about it, but you evacuate an entire building, the what if comes into your head too. Um, about how do you get people to certain places much quicker. Um, just thinking worst case scenario of something else would be coordinated. Um, yeah, so it's every single situation is entirely different. Right. Um, and it's doing, you know, the best that you possibly can in that moment, which, um, you know, for us, we have a kind of system where people that are kind of not emotionally involved in it, a different building can help you walk through what's sure. going on because, um, you know, believe it or not, you're not walking around with a computer doing all that. You have to have somebody do that and you have to be able to interface with multiple different organizations and coordinate their efforts. And, um, so you, you really need kind of a clear mind in order to do that because you have like this kind of you have a limited amount of time to get <coughs> information out and be as direct and clear as you possibly can. Um, yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, an unfortunate, completely unfortunate situation, but it certainly did give everybody an opportunity to test it out, and I think it went beautifully. Yeah. The misinformation that floats around about it, though, is still troublesome. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, on one hand, you can't really do much about it, you know. So, oh. and that, a lot of that came from outside of our community. So, that's hard to stop that. My son was on the, he works on the West of Squad, and, and fighter part me always takes pictures so he comes up for all that stuff and he had said mom he said your your administration and your staff and your kids all should be commended on the way this was handled the communication was you know outstanding they knew exactly what was going on you know in three different ways phone calls and text messages and emails and um, so he thought it was one heck of a nice job you know, I said, well, we're, you know, you look at things, you try and improve, or, you know, maybe you can improve, but he was very impressed at the way it was handled. Yeah. So kudos for that. Anything else? Anything else, Nick? I am complete. All right, moving on. Katie, elementary right. principal's report. All right, March um, was quite a whirlwind, to say the least. Um, so a couple of bright spots at the <clears throat> elementary school. Um, we started off the month with Read Across America Week, which celebrated Dr. Sue's birthday. So we had dress up days. Um, the students completed a bookmark decorating challenge. Um, so that was a lot of fun. We did open up the salad bar, or I'm sorry, the chef salad option for first and second grade. So now we have all grades, first through awesome. sixth, that have that option. Um, it's been successful through and through. So um, with all the good lettuce, right? with all the good lettuce. Yes, exactly <laughs> right. We talked about that today, actually. Um, but a huge thank you to all the staff that helped with that, um, because again, I think it has taken a lot of education on the students' part, as well as educating all the other staff members in order to make that successful. So. Um, I'm very excited about that. We did have quite a few um, leprechauns running around the elementary school last week for um, St. Patrick's Day. Um, it's always a big to-do in our younger grades because we can never see or find those leprechauns, but they always seem to make an appearance this time of year and just kind of wreak havoc on everything and sprinkle glitter everywhere. So that was that's always a good time. Um, and then I also wanted to just give a shout out to all the elementary staff. I think um, this school year, especially these last couple of months, a lot of staff have been just kind of dealt some personal adversities that they've had to navigate themselves through. And I um, bring that up under a bright spot because I think um, everyone deserves a shout out just for being there and supporting each other as staff. Um, this has probably been one of the most challenging school years um, across the board and the staff show up for each other daily and just do what needs to be done for the kids and for each other. So I thought I would mention that under bright spots. Um, we are right in the thick of our spring assessments. So we had ACT early on in the month. Um, we also had our middle school students take the forward exam last week. Our elementary students and our 10th graders are taking the forward exam this week and next week. And then right after spring break, we roll right into the ninth and 10th graders who will be taking the ACT Aspire. So this is kind of that really big, long stretch of time um, that's heavy on the assessments, um, takes a lot of um, staff coordination, schedule changes, just everything is kind of in a little bit of upheaval. So um, it'll be nice to kind of have that behind us come April. So. Um, and spring concerts, so we this month had two of our three elementary spring concerts. On the 17th, we had our third and fourth grade concert. Last week, Thursday, on the 24th, we had our first and second grade concert. Um, our 4K and kindergarten concert is, ne uh, yeah, is next week, Thursday, on the 7th. Um, and that'll wrap up all of those events for us. And then lastly, on my agenda, um, as of this afternoon, our summer school courses have been opened for registration. So we did send that out to all of our families um, in an email. It was posted on Facebook with the links to register and view all the courses. 
Um, if you have any questions, you can contact Lindsay Harmon directly. She's coordinating that this year. Um, you might get some information throughout the summer. We're kind of trying to think creatively a little bit on how to offer some maybe pop-up, like shorter um, courses for students throughout the summer, kind of more community-based um, partnership type of classes, but more information will come on those separately. So, very exciting. <coughs> Okay, questions? All right, we'll keep moving. Middle school, high school principals report and Pathfinder report. All right, so I have that on really, really hard. Oh gosh, I'm gonna try and do something. <laughs> uh, I'm a really hard time for you guys, but I also have a really bad echo. You hear the echo? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Hoot hoot. <laughs> Help us on the way. It's so much better. Yeah. All right, this should be better. Yes, that's better. Um, I want to start with testing. I know Katie touched on some of that. Um, we are also in the thick of our testing. Um, our 10th grade will be finishing the forward exam tomorrow. Um, then we just have the ACT Spire for 9th and 10th graders left, which will be. Um, right when we come back from spring break, April 28th and April 21st. And then we will have the Dynamic Learning Maps DLM for our students with disabilities, um, finishing that up in April. Um, as for the library, we had a meeting last week um, with Katie Struts to talk about the high school library um, and kind of get an update on what that's going to look like. So she gave us some blueprints of the furniture um, and shelving and kind of just some of the ideas she had. Um, as to what it could look like, and I thought that the blueprint was excellent, and her ideas are very creative and student-centered. Um, we also had a student there, so they could give their input, and the student may be working with them in the library as well um, to hopefully help get it set up this summer. She'll be ordering some of the furniture, so hopefully it'll be in um, and not sitting on a ship somewhere in the ocean. <laughs> um, she's hoping to have it ready hopefully by the beginning of next school year. So that was really exciting because we've been waiting a long time to get our library back up and functioning at the high school. Mm -hmm. And then um, break spots in classes. So we've just got a variety of classes doing some really cool things with the high school right now. Um, our culinary arts two class went to Homestead mm -hmm. Kitchen today to learn the ins and outs of managing a restaurant. So Scott for cash. Met them there and just kind of gave them a tour, showed them in the kitchen, um, and then kind of gave his why as to why he's there and um, just gave him a quick overview of how a restaurant is managed. Um, our English 9 students are learning how to use our podcast equipment. We have this amazing podcast set up and it doesn't get used enough. So um, Mrs. Perilero had them... Um, just kind of learn how to use the podcast equipment and um, how to create stories. So they're reading stories and they paired up with Miss Massey in the bedroom and use different instruments to kind of narrate the sounds of their stories. Um, so once those are finished, we'll hopefully get them out on Facebook so people can hear them. But it was, it was pretty awesome to be there and see what they were doing. Um, we have one student in beta who's also using the podcast equipment um, and She's doing a podcast on mental health and their experience and treatment. Um, she's got two episodes in so far, and I think she's got one on the docket, so I'm hoping to share those out soon. And then my last um, bright spot was just the arts night, which I know um, both Barb and Julia touched on, but it was really just an awesome night. Um, got to showcase so many of the talents that we have in our building, and um, I had a blast just being able to learn how to weld a little bit and paint and cook. So. I um, just wanted to give a shout out to our CTE teachers and our students um, for an awesome night, and I can't wait to see what they have in store for next year. Does anybody know how many attended that art night? Katie, do you know how many attended that art night? Approximate? Community? I can get you the number. I'm not sure, but there was quite a few people there. Okay. I didn't get to see a lot because I was in and out of classes okay. the whole night, but I know that there was quite a few people there. Yeah, the, the gym was full. The gym was oh, full. Oh, gym was full. Oh, okay, yeah. that's I mean, all I need to know. The band, yeah, and then there were other people yeah. around doing other things. Okay, great. Right. Yeah, and there are different yeah. things happening even yep. outside of that. So, yep. yeah, okay. it was well attended. Good. Mm -hmm. For the first time, it was really successful. I think that's it. Thank you, Katie. 
Um, special um, report. Um, last week, Monday, we held our annual early childhood screener event. Um, we kind of had a quick turnaround by the time we got things out in the mail and to when we could um, hold it in person. So I just kind of want to publicly say if anybody did have any concerns regarding their child, ages three to five, um, development, please reach out to me so that we can arrange a time for early childhood screener. Um, but then the Lions Club was able to come in and do the visual screener for us, so a special oh, nice. thank you to mm -hmm. them. That's always much appreciated. Um, a few bright spots in the special ed world. I recently had two high school students reach out to me requesting job shadows. So this Friday, um, an individual is going to be shadowing two different paraprofessionals throughout the day. And then um, just today I got an email regarding a, uh, someone interested in the special education field and would like to get in the elementary school and kind of see what it's all about. So that's really exciting when we think about growing our own. Um, we have a field trip coming up. Uh, Logan Rankin is taking some students out in the community. They're going to see a performance at the Widener Center next month. <coughs> um, it's always exciting to get out in the community. I think they're going to go to a restaurant too. Um, and then lastly, something that I've been <coughs> working on um, when thinking about staff retention, especially in special education, when that's always really hard for us to fill and kind of keep and retain people, um, is just kind of a flow chart of career advancement and, and ways to um, kind of further your education to kind of bump up. So say there's a paraprofessional that wants to become a special education teacher. What are some courses that they, or what are some pathways that they can take to become a teacher? Or say they want to go into the admin role, how, what way can they do that? So I'm just kind of creating a visual to help um, spell that all out, but then also create opportunity. But really, that's all I have for special ed. That's a great idea, Mark. Good work. <coughs> Any questions for Marie? Okay. The Valgoma Monthly Update. Teal. I have one real fun uh, bright spot. Um, in the last month, I think it was two weeks ago, and I didn't look at you just because of Elizabeth, but our EL coordinator, uh, Elizabeth, was um, able to invite um, some of our Latinx students to something called Access to Adventure, um, where they met with Denmark, Latinx students, and Sevastopol students at Crossroads in Sturgeon Bay, and spent an entire day exploring um, some of our public land and having access to that, and um, just from their perspective and their culture and their family traditions, how would they interact with um, Crossroads? Um, I attended, and it was, just a, such an amazing event to see all of these students and we had oh, I think well, there was over 75 students from three different schools just sharing experiences um, obviously some of them can speak you know multiple languages and um, we had a mother from our community make tacos and it was just like such a great event um, reminded me of when we used to have Oh, what, it, what was it called? The Culture Week at the elementary school. Oh, oh, yeah. Yes. What was that called? Oh. I think, uh, was it the Respect Fair? Respect Fair, yeah. Yes. yes. I just, yeah. I mean, when I was teaching, everybody you know, could just bring just, you know, some of their ethnic foods and that sort yes. of thing and celebrate their traditions. And um, it was a really neat thing. So, Access to Adventure is just something that they're trying to get people who don't normally access some of our public land to like Peninsula State Park and Crossroads and how do we bring them in a shared space and something that we heard from with our UW um, partners is just you know having them build that sense of community with each other because they have some things in common like traditions that they celebrate so it was just a it was such a awesome remarkable day um, what did you what did you I'm writing this down what did you call that access what? access to adventure okay yeah and it involved three different <coughs> schools? Did. Yep. Yeah. They, we're going to include five. There was five total schools, but two head off, I believe, so. Gibraltar, Gibraltar. Right, State Basketball, mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. another school head off. Yeah. So it was just the three of us? It was just the three schools, three, yeah. Three schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, and the, the EL uh, teachers were able to meet each other more formally and, um, yeah. They it asked, sounds like it was a big group, though, so it was, it was plenty. Huge. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun day. Yeah. Nice. Um, oh, sorry, that's it. I'm going to try an extra report. I'm just going to write next to but I'll wait. 
Okay, ABA, Algoma Venture Academy update. Well, I have Abigail in here. I was going to say. She's a, like officially observing all of you, so oh, I think she's oh. documenting. You didn't see her notes. She's Abigail's um, in her final um, run to get her admin license. She'll be done, are you turning 21 in April? Mm -hmm. So at 21, she'll have her admin license. and. Um, so, but she's here talking. I did invite her, but she says, you got it. So I'll give the report, but you can ad lib. Um, one thing I just wanted, there's just, we put a lot of weight and merit in our students in Venture Academy, making connections outside of the school district. So we are project-based, community-based learning, which yes, uh, middle school, high school does project-based, community-based stuff. You can very well see the things that they do. Mm -hmm. um, the difference is that Venture Academy does it, that's what we primarily do. And one of our main goals is that by the time they graduate, they have a network of people that they have multiple connections with outside of the district. And then we also measure the depth of that connection. And there's four different kind of measurements, so to speak. So we use these terms, but sparked, stable, frequent, and mutual. So a sparked connection is just, they know somebody out in the district, they maybe have met them a few times, had conversations with, um, they could contact them at any time. Um, that's kind of a bare minimum connection. Stable means that you know they have multiple interactions and that they um, maybe worked on a project for them. So the student is doing something for an outside community member. Um, like, I'm just looking at Jen, but um, the Methodist Church cleaned out a house one time and for some physical activity, just, hey, you guys want to move some furniture? They were working on a project for that opportunity in the community, which is still great. Then there's these frequent um, connections, and that means that they're working together with a community member on a project. So they have frequent communication, um, it's back and forth, that sort of thing. And then um, mutual is something that we really deem to get to with our connections and that's a mutual like they are planning coordinating um, doing something from maybe start to finish student and community member so it's very integrated work and it's very frequent um, so with that said Abby and I kind of met and just discussed you know our our theory and not even theory but evidence from you know our live Algoma work and our youth change agents and what this a Venture Academy is established on is that if our students have a network that's broad and multiple individuals that have a mutual connection that their learning pathway will be stronger and they'll become more successful post even during high school post high school so just curious I mean this is trial right this is our first year open so we're looking at where are our students and a hundred percent of our students have at least one sparked connection. That's the, you know, they just know of other people outside of our district and can contact them. 100% of our students have at least one, if not more, stable relationships with somebody else, meaning they've done a project for them already. 60%, which was like, we were getting arm chills today, and I didn't even know this, but 60% of our students are have, have at least one, and actually the average is two. The average is two. Um, they have where they're working with community members on a shared project and 50% of our students at this point in the school year on year one have a mutual at least an average of two community partners where they are planning coordinating the community members that are coming in we have community members that are advising them on their head rush um, and at this point I was to be honest if you would have asked me I would have not said that but we looked at all of the data today, it was 50% of our students have at least two mutual connections outside of the district. And that's in year one. Um, <clears throat> some of our, I mean, the majority of our students right now, and Abby, I'm looking at you because I get a 17, I think, our middle school. Mm -hmm. And I think about if in eighth grade, which is the most of our population right now, if our eighth graders have right now at least two community members that they are working in coordination with, and they do that just minimally every year till they graduate. Think about the network that they will have built by the time they go on to whatever pathway they choose. And I just think that was, over all the things we're doing at Venture Academy, that was something I just really wanna speak about that I think we could learn from. 
And I know in the district we've done that with Wolfden. We talked about um, connect the dots to ensure that our students have at least five people outside their family and friends that they have a connection with. Um, so how do we think about some of those best practices and adapt them more strategically and purposefully in the middle school, high school pathway? So just saying that. And then I want to give an improvement. Um, one thing was our parent-guardian communication. We're using HeadRush. Um, so it's just an online module where all their projects and work are stored, basically. Um, it's like a super detailed, glorified power school. And the parent reports that were there's no way to automatically give like a, a parent guardian report. So um, thinking differently about that, um, we didn't want, at first we were like, yeah, the teachers can just email out the parents and tell them what's happening. And then we paused and thought, wait, what is the purpose of Venture Academy? And that's to put the student in the driver's seat, for them to be accountable um, and responsible for their learning. And um, so now weekly, I believe starting quarter two, semester two, we started to have, um, we have weekly communications where the student every Friday sends out a parent guardian email with their, we have advisors um, for them, Adventure Academy, they CC their advisor, and they give their progress report for the week, which talks about all the projects that they're working on, things that they have to do, the learning targets they're achieving, um, things that are successful, maybe things they need to work on, um, but it's coming directly from their child, which it changes the conversation, um, and it also opens the door to have this collaborative care team around this shared goal. Um, and then Monday, I'm just gonna put this out there looking at Abby, we talk a lot about phone use. I think this is a general thing in any situation in the district, um, but considering, I don't know if this is confirmed, but I'm gonna plant the seed that students will take a snapshot of their phone usage from their phone and also send that with their weekly communication to say, this is how much time I've spent on my phone, because most phones, not all phones, most cell phones have like some kind of productivity, so how much do they spend in social media, gaming it, you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yes. I don't know that all parents and guardians know of this, but our students definitely know. And I, honestly, it's not to be like, not to develop consequences, I don't think our students really are self-aware of how much they really do utilize their phone. So we just did a student's interest survey and we were just, I don't think they're even aware of it. So, I don't know. Abigail, anything from you? Thank you, guys all. <laughs> How's your master's going? Are you almost Great. done? <laughs> yes. One more summer, one more semester and then a summer and then I'm done. So. Yes. So back to some of these different programs. <clears throat> Obviously, some of these relationships and things would be would allow the students to maybe explore something they think they're interested in, right? Because there's yeah. nothing like trying something and doing it to find out if, yes, I like this, or no, I could never do this for the rest of my life. And the, yes. if the, starting at eighth grade, they can have lots of opportunities because I think you know when when we are meeting with the seniors you know at the scholarship meeting and you know some of them are you know still feeling like you know am I making the right decision on what I might want to do and and I think the more we can give the kids the opportunity to try things and decide for themselves um, because sometimes you find that just because you can do it, just because you can actually do it very well, doesn't mean you really want to spend the rest of your life doing it. Because you might be able to do a lot of things really well, and you need to just keep exploring. I think it's also just knowing that other people care about your success. I think, our, I hope our students know at least of one person in the school that cares about their success, but to know that other people outside the school walls and outside your family and friends care about you and want to help you and can leverage their own you know places and positions to help you get there is really critical mm -hmm. um, I just think about like Vivica um, as a student in ABA just started in the semester already and we posted on Facebook so if you want to check it out but has been working with MCC label so definitely not interested in manufacturing herself she's an incredible artist has passion and talents in that but thought about how she could utilize her artistic ability with the Now Gardening program. So met with 
met with Penny Lemberger, who is in, in ahead of that, and some students or whatever, and understood what they wanted, developed a logo, worked with multiple people from MCC, was navigating email conversations, um, then worked with Zug right on site. She actually printed the labels with Zug to understand that. And I sat, and I, she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 learning targets, which are Wisconsin state standards. 16 on one like project that she was doing. Um, and it's incredible to see like she's taking something and, and learning like she was learning about um, label production. Not that she's going to necessarily do that, but now she has a connection with with Zuck. She's got a connection with the art department from MCC. So now they care about what she's doing. They care about what the student, the school is doing. That's the kind of I get excited about that stuff. And we're seeing that when a student can get to that mutual relationship their success in school, their confidence in their themselves, their self-awareness, their self-advocacy is like through the roof. They're like unstoppable once that happens. Um, are we there yet with all our students? Nope, and we need to be, but... Um, anyway. Well, part of it is just allowing them to learn in a way that interests them. And I think, Abby, you were one of our early pioneers <laughs> in some of our early programs where, you know, you said yourself, you know, school wasn't meaningful to you in terms of some of the classes. You'd be just looking at the clock, waiting until the hour was done. And and so, um, obviously, you're very bright, and you're one of our shining stars. I mean, you took so many credits in in that we were able to help you get while you were in high school, that you sailed right through Madison, and, and then thankfully came back to spread your um, same enthusiasm, but I think you wanted to make sure there was an opportunity for other students to have, to get excited about learning. And yeah, and so, yeah, this allowing them to pick some projects and fit them to learning targets, I think. Yeah, I, I love that, so anyway. I'll stop talking. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, with the EVA, I mean, do kids have to go in there full time, or can they just go and take a class or two classes out of there? Full time. It has and, to be full time. Yeah. Okay. And the, the the thing is, is, I mean, they can go into Venture Academy and take a class or two in middle school, high school, and that's currently what they do. You know, there are certain classes that, like band, for example, sure. they, they want to take band. We're not going to. We don't offer that, you know, and we have to work together. We're all one staff. It's, you know, um, one field. I had a, Mr. Shrinka had a really great analogy. You should ask him about it, about venture kind of, do you remember? About one field and yeah. sometimes it's like you have employees that might take care of, if you have one farm, you have some employees that might take care of the crops and that's where they work best and you have some employees that might take care of the cows and that's where they work best. Mm -hmm. and. It's not that Venture Academy is better or not as good as middle school, high school. It's a different learning pathway. Some mm -hmm. students are more successful when they have um, more control over their learning, when they can direct it, uh, when they have hands-on. Not that middle school, high school doesn't do those things. They do lots of hands-on project-based, community-based learning, and they will continue to do that because that's what we value with the Algoma School District. That's where our district goals lie. Um, but Venture Academy is all about not having a schedule, mm -hmm. not having someone, you know, um, in middle school, high school, some students need that structure. They need the teacher guided stuff because that's where they thrive and there's mm -hmm. everything about that. And then there's some students that really like the integrated learning. Um, so to do half and half, I think Katie Horn would tell you, we can do that right now. So if middle school, high school, they want to, go through four classes and then they want to do like an internship or they want to, you know, we have students right now that were working on diesel mechanics um, for half of their day and they weren't in Venture Academy and um, we made it happen for them. So we still make things happen for students that need a different, unique learning style. But if they're going to sign up for Venture Academy, it's, it's Venture Academy. We've also got a question, can it be virtual? Can you offer virtual 100% Venture Academy? No, that's not the model. Um, that's not what we do. So, And they're not locked into it. If they no. try it for a year and yeah. then decide that they want to go back into the regular traditional, they certainly can do yeah. that, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Moving on, committee reports. We had a finance committee meeting March 16th. We did. Um, as Nick alluded to, you know, the finances of the district are very healthy. Um, I can remember the days, <laughs> some of us can remember the days when it wasn't quite that way. Um, I remember having a room twice this size filled with teachers and parents because we had to make a decision to what teachers are we going to cut because we couldn't afford to keep them. As Dave likes to put down, we were counting pencils. <laughs> right, Dave? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, we can attribute our success right now, our financial stability right now, is to the past administrations for guiding us through that um, and keeping the mill rate stable. That's the key to keeping us from going back to those days. Um, when we looked at the budget, um, there were some monies there that wasn't quite utilized um, at all or maybe not, not fully. So we're going to be really taking that, looking at that budget and maybe prioritizing that money and putting it where it really is needed the most, um, which would help out a lot of classrooms. And so other than that, we're looking pretty good. Questions? OK, yeah, next step is finalizing the budget for next year. Mm -hmm. And um, then we'll go from there. OK, current COVID statistics, how are we doing? All zeros. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Other items for discussion, the diesel program. There seems to be a lot of misunderstanding, so I don't know who wants to start on that one. If you want to just sort of explain what, if somebody's interested in diesel, what options they have. Well, moving forward, their only option would be to do you know, uh, the LC diesel tech program. Okay. Um, but uh, currently, um, we have students that this past year uh, spent some time under the kind of umbrella of Voltec doing that. We also had other students that <coughs> went to what I would call <coughs> a little bit more of a traditional route. You talked about people taking the dual credits. Um, so students where that works for them, they can go to Surgeon Bay. They can be involved in that program. Um, a lot of that has to do with timing. Um, Is that the, um, at the NW, tech school? At the WTC campus in Surgeon Bay, so that's where they you know, program is housed. The one in LC is obviously you apply for it to be there for your junior and senior year. So if you're currently a junior, it doesn't help you necessarily to go there because you're not going to be exposed to the amount of coursework or activity that you would be able to get um, up in certain Bay through a traditional dual credit option. So. Um, I would, I would say moving forward, um, depending on timing and where a kid is in their you know, high school career, uh, LC could be their option. Um, or um, if they're a little, a little bit further on in their high school um, coursework, I would suggest doing the dual credit <coughs> option um, because then it's entirely dependent on them and they can um, really accelerate themselves as much as they can handle. Um, Abigail's kind of the extreme where you see kids that, you know, could get up to 50, 60 credits while they're in high school. Um, whereas, 59. Sorry, um, but, you know, the others, we have a lot of kids that will get, you know, 6 to 18 credits while they're in high school. And, um, you know, that's a big deal nowadays because you know, your average tuition cost is probably north of $15,000 a year. So, you know, students don't have to pay for that. Um, and it cuts a lot of that out for families. So I think it's a really good win-win. Um, the other part is, you know, there's a difference in what you get, you know, depending on where you go. So I'm not all about pieces of paper, but pieces of paper are different. and. You know, when something's a certificate versus an associate's degree, there's a big difference. Um, and you just have to be cognizant of where you can get what um, and whether something is an opportunity or, you know, I'm going to be beholden to people that are in a totally different 
situation than I. Um, so I think it just requires a look at uh, what actually is going to happen <laughs> versus. So do they have to open enroll to LC to, to well, get into that program? They wouldn't have to, no. Um, but the part that's tricky is that we don't change our schedule for an individual to go to LC. So when they go to LC, they come back, we're already halfway through our schedule. So you have to be open to potentially doing things differently, right? So we're not a school where we have 10 math teachers and 10 English teachers, we have two. Um, so if those courses are not offered at that time, we have to be creative about how you can do that. And that's not the end of the road, we do that all the time. But it requires individualized scheduling. Um, and I think we've never had a problem with it. I know Katie has many kids that have many individualized schedules and she tells me all the time that we don't have, I don't know, sure we have a single senior that is here all day, every day. So our kids are involved in a lot of stuff outside of the school building. Um, you've heard about internships, you've heard about shadows, you've heard about all that. That's something that I've always valued. I've always wanted kids to get out and do those things. Um, but that's an individual thing, right? So um, some kids are going to maximize that. Others might put their toe in the water a little bit and try things out. Um, but really, you have endless possibilities now, um, which didn't exist, you know, just a few years ago. So now you can basically create your own your own deal. Um, and what you see is you know, not something that I'm a super big fan of, but you see going to multiple schools and then one school is your athletic school and one school is your academic school. And I mean, I'm not a big fan of that, but it's reality, you see it. Um, so um, yeah, that's where, that's where I'm at. I mean, we've done that for years and years and years, which is why, you know, for me, the youth apprenticeship internship stuff, you know. Because we've been doing that. Right. So, um, and it's whatever. I won't be here in three months, so. <laughs> but, but you said that we don't, we always partnered with the tech schools. And we've always had a really good relationship. Right, and with this new Northeast Wisconsin program, we don't have that option anymore. It has to go through this, right? Well, they're just going to know about it. Oh. Um, we are, I mean, I can tell you, we have students that are, you know, going to spend 95% of their day in Sturgeon Bay next year on the end of NWTC campus, right? Because they can, they only need a credit here to graduate um, so they can take their rest of their entire coursework up there on our dime, right? So why wouldn't we do that? Right. If you're in that position, and you're saving your family 15,000 plus dollars a year. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't fault them for that at all. Yeah. But they, they still have to, you know, primarily it's English, right? So you need four years of English, right? So you're kind of held to the, this building for that class. Um, but then, you know, the rest of the day you can organize around a college schedule, which is obviously different than a high school schedule. So they might meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and you might be able to pick a class on Wednesdays and Fridays, so you can really, again, if you have the capacity to do it, you can leapfrog years worth of, uh, you know, your classmates and what they're doing. Um, and if you're extreme like Abigail, you leapfrog, you know, the entire generation of college students. <laughs> right. um, so. so, Nick, is that... So the diesel program is part of this. Is part of this, or not? We're, we're not we're talking about two separate things. We're talking about one thing, and the diesel program is part of this at LC. Sure. I mean, right? it's you know, you're gonna. They will have some involvement, so mm -hmm. that will be connected. Right? The diesel program at LC. That's where I'm talking about. When you go there, you the piece of paper is different. Okay. Is is there a a um, cap on the number of kids outside their own school district they will take? That I don't know. I know you have to apply. 
Okay, and then so, they, so that doesn't necessarily mean you will get accepted. Correct. Correct, but I can't imagine that they wouldn't yeah. accept anyone unless it was obvious like this is going to be bad from day one. I can't imagine that they would deny anyone access because I mean, they're getting state funding for those kids to be there. So just like we get them, they get them. So if I'm understanding you correctly, at Luxembourg's diesel program, you finish the program and you get a certificate that you complete the program. Yeah, it's like a pre associate you degree will, certificate. If you and you have to, to take both junior and senior year right. to do that. And okay. you because it's dependent on their schedule. Right. And you go up to NWTC and you come out with an associate's degree. Well, Ho hopefully that's the plan. Yeah, you, you can get the lion's share of stuff. Yeah, or right? yes, or pretty you, close to an associate's degree. Right. So you could be a summer away from an associate's degree if you really, again, I mean, this is perfect right. scenario. Kid goes up there and is successful and can back to back classes. Absolutely. Right? So because the district pays for their. Absolutely. It's state law. Pays for their at NWTC dual credits, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So understands that. The, um, the certificates that they get, I imagine they get one for their junior year and then they get one for their senior year, right? Or do they get one completion? One does that does that count towards, or will that. It would apply to them. And then going maybe to they would only have to take a half a year of the diesel program or, or something again depending on what they completed what they completed okay and then you mentioned something about the wolf tech is that for kids who are not old enough to get into those kids that really those those classes that really want to start pulling apart motors already <laughs> well wolf tech yeah, this is hard to explain so wolf tech is like ten thousand foot view right and then basically based on student interest, mm -hmm. right? That's what kind of the projects are created or the lanes or the pathways within Wolf Tech, right? So everybody thinks that Wolf Tech is just woodworking. Wolf Tech's not just woodworking. No. Wolf Tech can be whatever you want it to be, right? Whatever you have so, enough kids interested right. in. Yeah. I mean, and really not necessarily enough kids because you could have a student that's interested in one thing and they can do it independently, okay. right? So then under this umbrella of Wolf Tech, you have this complete whole lane where you can explore whatever you want, get better at your craft. The piece that intrigues me is a, you know, any type of scenario where we partner Wolf Tech with Venture Academy because Venture Academy is kind of your research and design innovation center. They don't have to follow the same restrictions and guidelines that the traditional school does. So, the perfect partnership is you could, you know, we've talked about this at other times, where I'm not so sure there is a high school certified master plumber, instructor, okay? <laughs> but everybody wants you to teach all these things, but the actual certified instructor doesn't exist, okay? So you get people screaming at you to teach this, yet you can't because you get my drift. Uh -huh. In venture, okay, they don't have to follow that. They can take an industry expert. That industry expert, right, can provide instruction on a three week, a four week, an eight week, a one day a week, right? And they are, their expertise is recognized in that model because you hear them talk about learning targets and all that it all has to be like prescribed ahead of time mm -hmm. so when they would complete that say eight you know week course with barb they would then say you know barb would assess them on those learning targets and whether they achieve them or not and then they get credit for that and the you know, venture model doesn't have to abide by the highly qualified teacher, mm -hmm. okay? So that's, to me, mm -hmm. the land of greatest opportunity. Mm -hmm. But it requires some very out-of-the-box thinking, which can be problematic, right? Um, because n nobody's doing that right now. But I can tell you that 
next year in this region, you will see a completely virtual Destinations Career Academy. My close friend runs it. There's over 3,000 kids involved in it. It is a virtual technical education kind of chart, okay? Mm -hmm. We have a student enrolled in it right now, getting a CDL. Mm -hmm. Right? So you, you think about, is changing. I mean, you we think have about to all these opportunities. He still has to do, you know, the actual, you know, driving and all of that. But as far as the content, he can be anywhere in this state. And he can learn all of that pre-CDL stuff. He can get all of that training. All he has to have is a sponsor. Right? We have enough people that have CDLs in this community. We have enough people that say, yeah, I'll take you out and learn how to drive a little dump truck or drive this or drive that. We've got kids that leave here already and they go to every big farm around here and drive the biggest equipment you want. So it already exists. Why we're not capitalizing on it, right? Because I don't hear other places doing that. So I think you think about so many career fields in career and tech, yet, whether you want to be an equipment operator, anything like that. You can go to the best equipment operator school in the entire state, and they're going to park you at a virtual computer, and that's how you're going to learn how to run a 100,000 pound excavator. So what they're doing is trying to get all of this stuff in the hands of kids and kind of flesh out who's really interested in it or not. Right. That's because the actual hands-on training costs a fortune. Mm -hmm. And those employers want to know that, hey, Pat's invested, right? Mm -hmm. She's already done this, right? And she's invested. So like the kid who's getting a CDL, when he completes all of that stuff, he's at the front of the line for uh, local 139 union operators, the front of the line. That's a big deal. Yeah. It is. <laughs> well, I also like what you know. You mentioned the plumber. Yeah. I mean, the trades. Mm -hmm. Yep. The trades are really Absolutely. needed in so many, especially small communities. The trades are needed, and if there are kids that are interested in it, we have to figure out a way that they can get some of right. that the, to the, try it to the see. The crux if they... of being in a small school district is <clears throat> all the trades still exist. Right. Right. So everybody wants you to teach about all of the trades. <laughs> But you don't, you would have 75 trade instructors, right? So how do you think about providing that in a different model? So I think down the road, you're going to be saying, you know, who's a master electrician? Can we work something out where you might come here one day a week? Or maybe you, they run their own business and they're like, hey, let's, you know, Maybe I could have a little corner over here and I can teach kids how to, to do this. And we figure out some way, shape, or form to coexist. Yep. Because you can't bring that person in full time. So I think we have things that they want. Mm -hmm. They have things that we want. How do we all live kind of harmoniously without having to, <laughs> you know, jump through all these imposed hoops by the powers that be. Because you don't have to. There are so many platforms now to access and you can get whatever you want. It's whatever you, you know, are willing to access and whatever you're willing to kind of organize for yourself mm -hmm. is how things are going to go. Because Algoma is not the only small community in the state that's struggling. Right? So we that's why you have Destinations Career Academy with 3,000 plus kids in it, mm -hmm. right? That's why you have all these things that are popping up and they're inundated with kids. Is because it gives the, those kids an option, mm -hmm. right, that their local school district simply can't provide, you know? And for us, it's really simple. I sign a piece of paper that says, yep, this is a great opportunity for the kid. Mm -hmm. Partnerships. Right? They, they send the computer, they send all the, like, in a sense, it's a no-brainer. But I can see where people get a little territorial about things. Um, but this whole region up here has to start thinking about all the stuff has been going on in the southern part of the state for years. It's all, <laughs> it's all migrating, right? 
And if you think about some of the financial trouble that some school districts are experiencing, they're only going to see more of this, you know, because it's the only option that they're going to have to stay viable in small communities. So, you know, I think the what they have there, you know, the youth apprentice, you know, fine. You know, like I said last meeting, just make sure you get what we yeah. You get what they tell you because that's always been an issue is you know it knows this when I started here yep. we'd pay at least a seven and forty fifty thousand dollars a year. Yep. We don't do that anymore. And then they wouldn't show up and right. you know, so, you have teachers here and nobody came and um, you couldn't get an answer. I couldn't get an answer from Mr. Dickert and don't get a refund for your money either. So yeah, absolutely not. Right? Yeah. And, and then, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you get lumped into that stuff and you don't have a choice. Like, you know, the admin team knows this, but we'll get an update and it says, Oh, you know, you've been granted hypothetically ten thousand dollars, but nine thousand seven hundred and eighty seven went to CSL. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's the point? You know, what's the point? It's like Well our, hopefully our Hopefully they have new leadership. I mean, hopefully yeah, this have, works out. You know, they're going to ha have things to work on as well. I mean, I think it can be successful, but I just hope that they have the people. Because mm -hmm. uh, accountability is key. Okay, so going back to this DSAW, because it's, it's, it's the only phone call I ever get is about <laughs> this program. And I hope um, ready hot, on it a little bit because my son hot, went through it. A hot button yep. issue. Um, so if, if they want to take advantage of that diesel program in Luxembourg, we can do our darndest to make that happen for them. Absolutely if they choose to go up to NWTC and go for a dual credit, we can try and we can make that happen for them. I have many examples. Um, and again, obviously there, you're, there's something in the Wolf Tech that you, you're doing for kids who aren't of age for these two options yet. You know, say a sophomore wants to start pulling apart a mortar. They can. They can. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they, we do have options for all these kids. Okay, because I know parents have gone through that diesel program. They're at Luxembourg. They're totally enamored with it. They say it's an amazing program. Um, it certainly is. And a lot of people, you know, they want they wanted their children to go through that. So, I mean, it's up to the individual parent or in children what option, what path they want to take. Right. But that program in LC is juniors and seniors. It's only juniors and seniors, Correct. yes, and half a year, right? And half a year juniors, half a year seniors. Your phone calls are from people that are not juniors <laughs> or seniors. So it's like you try to try to give options, but still have to fit point, in the program, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, ultimately, it's an individual choice. Right, it's an individual right. choice, and whatever choice they make, we can. Yeah. We can make it happen. As long as they're a junior and senior. As long as they're a junior or a senior. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have that. I got that right in my head, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. And it's a set schedule. So mm -hmm. if they choose to go well, there, they it is, have to... You know, scheduling would be an, you know, a nightmare in, in some cases. So, I mean, students are going to have to be flexible, and um, parents are going to have to be flexible with those kids to get their classes in, I would think. One thing I'll just say is Venture Academy does require a certification and an internship before graduation. So there's a lot of misconceptions and rumors about Venture Academy in the community. And for the life of me, I can't understand why certain individuals who are involved in the diesel mechanics here aren't thinking about that pathway for themselves because then they can wrap more around it. Because the, the problem is, is when you're in the middle school, high school, you, there's a set schedule. Okay, schedule. so if they were in that venture, if they were in the venture academy, it would be easier for them to take that LC certification. Or yes, no. No, they could design they, their they own. They could design program. their adventure yes. academy using that. Good. They that could, they pathway. Maybe could get a certificate going through there. Sure, it would have to be a discussion. Or they could go up to Sturgeon Bay. Yeah. But they cur they currently do that now. Right. Yeah. But, but I mean, the kids in the venture academy. I'm talking about the kids in the venture academy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's lots of options, but it's an individualized talk, and I think what happens is, is people just have, instead of coming to the building administrators and the superintendent or whoever knows, it just, you know, permeates in the community and the people have misinformed information. 
because I you, correct me if I'm wrong and, and input anything you want, but I, I remember a long time ago when you guys went to that meeting and it was only in the talking stage and they they were thinking about diesel and they were also going to do replicate some of what we have in here, correct? Right. And did they wanted us, to, us commit. to commit so many students, mm -hmm. which we didn't want to do because we had it here already. The sign is right on the building. It says Lakeview Regional Technical Academy. Right, right. Right? So what's different from NP Regional Technical Academy? I don't know. Nothing. Except so, the diesel. I mean, that's, you know, okay, that's my point. Right. Right? Where everything was good enough when it was for us to send students there. But when we had something, absolutely not. Over our dead body, would we ever send somebody to Algoma? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Barb was there. Yeah. <laughs> like, the same thing happened with Kiwani, right? So at the time, Kiwani is at the meeting because Kiwani was going through a referendum building an agricultural it's center, beautiful. right? It's beautiful. And we're like, yeah. hey, how about we all kind of collaborate on this so we don't have to all have our own. We can just have kids actually collaborate in Kiwani <laughs> County. Well, let's not do that, though. What does Luxembourg Castro do? Builds a greenhouse in a barn the next year. That's where I get just bent out of shape about this stuff. Because that's not the information that's being portrayed in the community. Well, and that's why I wanted to go back on the history because, you know, I, I remember that and I remember, you know, they talking about, they were, and I think, wasn't it supposed to be in the old Casco building at the time? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but was, when they yeah. wanted to duplicate what we have here and have us commit kids there rather than just stay here where it's in their, out the back door. Um, so I think people need to know, you know, that history on it. Um, but, you know, things have changed now. I mean, we've got that. I mean, the diesel program, if parent kids want to take that diesel program, can we can make it happen. Right. We can make it happen. Nothing, stopping them from Nothing is stopping them. Right. And they always could. And if it fits for them, that should be their goal. Their okay. Goal, right? Yep. Nobody is stopping them from doing that, right? I mean, I would encourage parents who want to take that route to go look at that that set up at Luxembourg. Um, Scott did. He said it's amazing. Um, I know Lonnie did too. He said it was amazing. So, I mean, that's the route, the path they want to take that just come and, and, we'll, and we can't, and we'll make it happen. The question I have is it's difficult when they come back, okay? Well, it's not Algoma's fault for having our schedule, right? right? So it's going to take flexibility right. on both sides. If we don't have what they need, fifth, sixth, and seventh hour, then we have to have some type of conversation about how we're going to acquire needed credits for graduation, right? Mm -hmm. And that might look like an alternative way. You might be taking an independent study. You might be talking to the teacher after school. You might be doing things virtually. Right. Right? However, that they're, you know, when you're in a program like that, if that program is number one, that that's what you have, right? Mm -hmm. So it's no different than being a college student, right? I didn't have a whole lot of freedom in what I could do. Coach Alvarez called to practice at 2 o'clock, my ass was at practice, right? Doesn't matter if I wanted to take accounting. Doesn't matter if I wanted to do this. That's my point. Like, if once you, you know, put your name on the line and that's the program, understand that on the backside of that, you might have to be a little bit flexible okay. with your graduation requirements. Because if you want to graduate from Algoma, school district, you have to meet the requirements of the Algoma school district. Right, right. well, Which yeah. they're gonna get kind of dual credit being at LC. I mean, we recognize that it's an elective credit, but it doesn't mean you, you know, don't have to take four years of English in Algoma. It doesn't mean that you don't have to take three and a half years, mm -hmm. you know. Right. So as long as that conversation can be had, then everybody is fine, right? But the problems come in is when there isn't a conversation. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, I hope that if you get more, more phone, phone calls, calls well, I, I might, I might, you know, you that's can. okay. I, I don't mind but, talking to people. Yeah, I think, well, it's good to talk It's good it conversation. Mm -hmm. good to talk okay. One more question. So this agreement, this youth oppression, this is only between Algoma, Luxembourg, the Greater Green Bay Char Chamber, and CISA? That's it? That's, that's um, it? But remember, those agencies, their service area, yeah. CISA 7 is the whole way oh, 47 okay. schools. All right. So when it was all set up, right, Luxembourg was involved in that because they're a host site, right? The Greater Green Bay Chamber is who we used to go through. Now they, when they partnered with yes. CISA 7, they consumed the Greater yep. Green Bay Chamber, right? So all of those entities have some stake in that. Um, and that's us, the six signatures that we need. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Does everybody feel comfortable that they understand this agreement? Okay. All right, we will move to action items. I need a motion to approve the regular board meeting minutes of February 28th, 2022, and the finance committee meeting minutes of March 16th, 2022. I'm going to have to be able to vote now. Hold on. Did Dave say so move? Was that a motion? <laughs> I don't think he can hear me. We're good. Was it? Okay, Dave. Dave, did you make a motion? Did you make a motion? Oh, no. no, I did not. Okay. <laughs> okay so move. I'll, right. I'll second. All right, motion made by Pat. Seconded by Joanne. Joanne. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Dave? Dave? Aye. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like we're going across the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need a motion um, for the approval of the bills that were presented to us. Also move. Motion made by Ann. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Second by Pat. Questions or discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the Board of Canvassers for April 5th, 2022 election. Okay, I've um, appointed a Allison and Jennifer to be the, um, on the Board of Canvassers with me. It has to be done by the second Tuesday after the election, which puts me in just coming back from Florida. So I really would like to get it done on that Thursday, the 7th, if I'm sure Allison will be here. I'm um, sure that you guys can we work can it out, whatever work works it out. out. We just yeah. have to approve okay. the group. Okay, perfect. So it's you and yep. Jennifer and Allison. And Allison. All right. Um, can I have a motion? I so move. Motion by Joanne. Do I have a second? Well, second. Second by Ann. Any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Well, Dave, was that an aye? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I need a motion to approve summer school 2022. I'll move. I'll go ahead. I so move. Okay. okay, I have a motion by Dave. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Second by Ann. Questions or discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Dave? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the 2022-2023 CESA 8 service agreement in the amount of $22,025. So move. I have a motion made by Mick. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Second by Joanne. Any questions or discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Dave? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve first agency insurance for the 2022-2023 school day coverage. I'll move. Motion made by Anne. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Second by Pat. Any 
questions or discussion on that? Has the premium gone up any? Uh, they have actually been pretty reasonable. Is it? Okay. And this is the one that the sports people, they, they need to buy their own insurance. Mm -hmm. This just covers throughout the school day. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the Northeast Wisconsin Youth Apprenticeship Service Agreement. Also move. Motion made by Mick. Do I hear a second? A second. Second by Ann. I think we've had a lot of discussion, but is yeah. there any more? Can I ask one more question? Yeah. Sure. How long are we tied into this? Year. One year. It's yearly? Okay, because I was trying to find it in your fine print. One year? Okay. Uh, I guess we're going to have the same thing next year. Mm -hmm. Well, that would give us a year to find out how this is going to work. Okay. It will work. And how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not going to work. We'll find out. We're going we're gonna to think positive. Yes. All right. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the board district goals. I so move. Motion made by Joanne. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Second by Pat. They were in your packet. We haven't revised any of them. Um, okay. Any questions or discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the elementary school student handbook. I so move. Motion made by Jennifer. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Seconded by Joanne. And I have some comments on that. So I'll start with mine, and then if there are any additional ones, um, let me look through. Let's see where am I? Obviously, you're going to update any of the staff. We know that that's always. It basically was under page seven, behavior and expectations. That is, um, I think, um, if we could add code of classroom conduct to that, and um, in our policy of 5500, the first two paragraphs of that, I think it will make clear a little bit more what the expectations are. And then you talked about a behavior matrix. I didn't, is that? Um, usually we do attach it to that. I didn't. Okay. For this purpose. But, okay. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to make sure if you were going to do that. And, and again, then just referencing policy 5500, which, um, which gets into a little bit more specific of the policy aspects. Um, then the next page, page eight, it's simply updating the reference to the anti-bullying policy mm -hmm. um, to the new um, policy numbers. It's 50. 517 and 5517.01. And then, number page nine, under district assessments, um, I think that we don't explain enough about what we're all doing in terms of the assessments that we do with the, the students, especially to sort of help determine what might help mm -hmm. them. So again, there's board policies, 2411, 2460, 2464, that's the council and career planning, the programs for gifted and talented, the exceptional educational needs, all those policies, um, I think could be referenced, but I think some of the things at the elementary level that I know you're doing in terms of assessments on the, on the students, I think other than just these required ones I think would be helpful for the families to be aware of. And I think that's, oops, nope. Sorry. Well, you know, you have all summer to get them ready for next year, right? Um, they were simply policy um, updates. Page 12, um, under student suspension, um, the um, first paragraph, I thought we should just um, reference 5610.02, 
Um, the second paragraph reference 5600, um, as well as 5610, and 5610 also is for the third paragraph. Because I think it's helpful when we have things like this that they know it comes through policy and the policy gets into a lot more details if somebody was interested in it. And now that we have a website that finally works. It's, it's nice. And you can actually access things. Um, I thought that would be helpful. All right, I'm done with my comments on the elementary school. Anybody else? Can I share two things you that I can. just the small adjustments that we had made? Okay. Um, on page seven, under before and after school procedures, we just changed the wording on that a little bit. Um, prior to COVID, we had all the students gathering inside to start the school day. Um, Last year, we started with having the students meet with the teachers outside, um, except for during inclement weather. So we are going to continue that. So I just changed some times um, for supervision outside during that time. Um, so we don't have supervision outside starting until 7.40 a.m. each day. And then the doors open at 7.45, which is when the teachers come out to meet the kids, or they're let in based on the weather. Um, and then I did, we did take out the section on um, virtual learning as a full-time option. So we had that in there last year, or for this year. Um, but, you know, we obviously are still using, utilizing blended learning. Um, you know, and when kids have extenuating circumstances where they have to be out of the classroom, they can join live. But we're not necessarily going to be offering that as a full-time option for families um, at this point, for next year, at the elementary level. So that is no longer in there. Okay. Katie, what do you call inclement weather? Um, anything from snow, sleet, rain, thunder, lightning, sometimes wind, depending on what comes with that, cold temperatures, um, basically whatever we would follow for our indoor recess. We okay. would follow for the same thing in the morning. So if somebody gets there earlier than quarter two or 22 and it's inclement weather, will the doors be opened for we them? We usually are watching. I mean, you know, we the doors are locked, so Shelly right. and I try to do our best. She has access to the cameras, so if she sees someone kind of like hanging out by the door, one of us will run down there and let a student in um, in those situations. But that doesn't happen too often. Um, and you don't encourage. And we don't necessarily encourage. We wouldn't want a student to be out there that you didn't yeah. know of. And yeah. So Not that we would leave someone out there. Yeah, that, but. Okay. Did yeah, you, some did people you have a comment, Dave? Dave, did you have a comment? No. Okay. You know, I'm assuming some people, back when I was in the working sector when I worked in Sturgeon Bay I mean I would have had to drop my kids off before I did drop my kids off before because I had to be to work um, so you know I just want to hope you know the inclement weather you know I want to make sure that we're keeping an eye on that any other comments or questions for the elementary school student handbook We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right, I need a motion to approve the middle high school student handbook as presented. I so move. Motion made by Joanne. Second, second. by Anne. And <laughs> I will start. And I think actually, I'm sorry, did one of you want to give some comment on one of the other things? Okay, all right. Um, the first thing I wanted to know is because the um, Algo Venture Academy has to abide by the same policies, general policies, right, in terms of some of the school policies. No. Do we have exemptions of policies yeah. that are detailed out in okay. the appendix in the contract? Yeah, and we have our own handbook. So I did notice that on the agenda that there were handbooks, and I'd ask, like, is that something that you want me to provide for next month's meeting? We can 
but we do have our own student handbook. Okay, I think that would be, because that was my question. Yeah. If you had your own, I think given that it is under the auspices of the school district, it would be good for us to see that handbook. Um, but yeah, the policy thing, we, most policies we follow, yes, but we do have exemptions right. to policies. Right, I know that, for, yeah. yeah. But you didn't rewrite every policy. Some of them do apply. No, we're just exempt from some. Right. Um, page 10 is just a suggestion. Um, under the Student Code of Classroom in Conduct, um, the school board policy number is correct. Kudos for whoever had that. It is the updated version. But I su my suggestion is adding the fourth paragraph of that same policy because that specifies the um, including the conduct on internet and, and TikTok. I mean, it spells it all out. It says if it applies to school-related functions that, they, that there is an expectation of the same conduct on those modes. And that is in our policy, so I think it should be in print because like they were saying, the amount of time, I mean, that's the kids' lives right now. Their um, social media? Social media, the, their phones, whatever. And so I think it should be um, in writing. They can certainly refer to the school board policy, but how many people do? So I think since that's such a part of the kids' lives, it would be helpful to have that fourth paragraph of the same policy. I think these first three are the first three of the policy. The fourth gets into the other. So if we could just throw that in there, um, I think that would be helpful. Because we can't expect kids to be held accountable for something they aren't aware of. And, and everyone that gets these handbooks has to say what they are. And I think that might have been the only thing I had. Anybody else? No, nope, I do not. Um, I, we offer we offer a hybrid of virtual at high school. Is that right? Yeah. Virtual hybrid blend mm -hmm. education experience. What page is that on? I didn't see that. Clarify that because that's still some COVID language that we probably should remove because kids can still take classes virtually. We just talked about that. Okay. Um, but we should. But it's not like rearrange. it's not like, like when we were right. virtual because it's, it's a different. Like a student, you know, we wouldn't say you know take all your classes virtually anymore. Right. Okay. So what page is that on? It's right on page six. And then you know, obviously the the name changes. You know, like when Mr. Right. Grasher come out and. Um, all the staff stuff has to be screened yeah. yeah. before the printing. I'm assuming that health and wellness education, there's no name there. You know, my day we'd call that FIED. I mean, is that what that is? And then, uh, health is broken up separately. Okay. So, but I mean, I didn't see anything that pertained to FIED here other than maybe this. Mm -hmm. Health and wellness is FIED. Okay. Okay. So it would be the FIED teacher. Andy, maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, oh, and one other thing. Page four. The board goals weren't updated. And they've just been re-approved for this year, so if you can get those. In the elementary school, they were the current ones. Yep. So. Anything else on the high school one? OK, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um. Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the middle high school summer building projects, the aquaponics flooring, um, face room remodel, not to exceed 125000 For both projects? Total. Total, okay. I so move. Motion made by Jennifer. I'll second. Second <clears throat> by Joanne. Questions or comments on that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Dave? Aye. Okay. Motion Aye. Motion carries. Um, we do not have any need for changes in practices since we have a nice zero on that. Request for future agenda items. 
are we going to be doing the teacher appreciation before that gets away on us? Because it usually does. Yeah. Yeah. Is it usually is it in May? I mean, it's usually the second Wednesday. So it should be definitely the second Wednesday. Um, hmm. It should be thought about and then maybe finalized at the next yep. meeting because our meetings are so late in the month. Yep. And when is our last day of school this year? 27th of May. Of May. Wow. Okay. I mean, we That's try nice. and have it early. Hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, if we could, um, if you could put a little thought into what might work and then we'll have to have a, whoever is involved in that meeting. But for April's for April's okay. agenda, um, and um, I think that probably I was thinking uh, I was thinking you know we didn't do any kind of a retreat. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, um, because you know that was all yeah, sort of after our board conventions, and you know we shared some of that information as well as others. Um, but given there's an election and everything, um, and we have uh, a new superintendent coming, I'm thinking probably if we're going to have one, it should be fall. Yeah, yeah, probably fall. Um, so that certainly is doesn't have to be listed as a agenda item unless we just sort of keep it in the everybody keeps it in the back of their minds. So anything else? Okay, I need a motion to go into executive session under Wisconsin Statute 19.85, subsection 1 C, E, F, and I for the purpose of personnel matters, hires, staffing, and resignations. I so move. Well, second. Motion to meet by Joanne. Seconded by Ann. Roll call vote, Dave. Dave? Yes. Jennifer? Joanne? Yes. Yes. Ann. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.